For this video, I'll be working through question two of the level three 2017 mechanics exam. Question two, Sylvia and Sam's spaceship spins clockwise on its axis. Um, as it is moving through space, astronauts can change the angular velocity of the ship by firing two small rockets there and there um, that are mounted tangentially at right angles. Um, the rockets produce an anti-clockwise torque. So, the torque is opposite to the rotation. So let's just highlight that now. They're going to be slowing it down. It's a bit of a... If you didn't pay attention there, you'd forget it. Um, the rotational inertia of the ship is 5.8 times 10 to the 4 kg meters per se uh, squared. That's I. I'll just write that in. Calculate the torque required from each rocket to cause an angular acceleration of that. Right. In your formula sheet, we'll just use that now, you have torque is equal to force times distance. It's also equal to the rotational inertia times angular acceleration. So we're going to have torque is equal to rotational inertia times the angular acceleration. I'll put the times in there just because whatever. Um, that's equal to 5.8 times 10 to the 4 times 2.00 times 10 to the negative 2. That will equal 1160 newton meters for both rockets. Rockets, and it is asking for the torque from one rocket. So half of that is, what's half of 1160? That is 580. So one rocket, let's put one rocket, produces um, 580. 80 newton meters of torque. It's in the units, whatever. Right, the spaceship is rotating clockwise at that angular speed, um, angular velocity, I should say. When the rockets are fired, calculate the angular speed of the spaceship after one rotation. Right, so now this is this is just back to level two physics, really. You write down what you've got. So we have the initial angular velocity that is equal to that, 0.5. Eight zero. We have the angular acceleration, which was given to us, 2.00 times 10 to the negative 2. We have the angular displacement, which is one rotation, so one rotation is just 2 pi. And we are trying to find the final angular velocity, question mark. If you go hunting through your formula sheet, you will find we are looking for something with a wi, a wf, Angular velocity and angular displacement. We look for basically something without time. Got time, can't use it. Got time, can't use it. We're going to use this one here because it doesn't have time. It's got everything else. Right. Omega F squared equals omega I squared plus 2A uh, alpha D. Going back to level 2 again. Um, that's meant to be angular, velocity, uh, angular acceleration. That's a bit messy. Um, and just a simple trick this. It's decelerating, so that's why I remember we had clockwise rotation and anti-clockwise torque. So it's they're slowing it down. That's what it's happening. So we need to remember that this angular velocity, angular acceleration is going to be negative. So if you plug that into your calculator, um, we'll just get rid of that square root. This whole thing that will give you um, 0.29 radians. Just a funny little side note: if you forgot to make that positive and then you didn't square root it, it still came out as 0.9, so that's a bit of luck. Um, but yeah, anyway. Assume that the torque produced by the rockets is... Ooh, I need to make this 3SF, don't I? Oh, I'd be right, they never marked it wrong for it. Assume that the torque is produced by the rockets is constant. Explain what happens to the size of the angular acceleration as the rockets gra gradually emit burnt fuel. So... From above, the torque is equal to the rotational inertia times angular acceleration. So we're trying to look at what's going to happen to the angular acceleration given the torque is constant. So what's going to happen, what's going to change is this rotational inertia is going to change. Um, the formula for rotational inertia is given to you. Is it given to you? No, it's not. No, it's not. But it is proportional. I is proportional to mr squared. Um, depending on whatever shape you have um, will depend on there's a constant here so for um, just like a ball going around on a string it's literally equal to mr squared for like a sphere 
uh, like a solid sphere. I think it's two fifths. Don't quote me on that though. I can never remember it off by heart. Right. Since the mass on the I'll just write it down. Right, I've said, I've got the formula here, torque is equal to the rotational inertia times angular acceleration. Um, there's the formula, the, the general formula for rotational inertia. Since the mass on the outer radius is decreasing, the rotational inertia will decrease. Um, as the torque is constant, the angular acceleration will increase. It's also because the mass in general is decreasing, um, your, angular, your rotational inertia um, will decrease but as well. So your radius and your mass are really decreasing, but it's more you get more of a bonus from your radius decreasing than your mass decreasing because radius is squared. Right, next question. Sometime later, the spaceship is rotating freely at 0.45 radians per second. The rocket's turned off. Um, shown here, the spaceship photovoltaic cells extended out from the spaceship, causing the rotational inertia to increase by that amount. So it's that amount plus the previous rotational inertia is equal to the new rotational inertia. Um, explain why the period of rotation changes as the photovoltaic cells are extended. Right, so I'll just go through it quickly. So if you, well here's an example. See ballerinas, or well not the ballerinas, um, ice skaters, um, you see them spinning when they pull their arms in, they decrease the rotational inertia, it speeds them up. Um, and if you spread your arms out, you increase your rotational inertia, you slow you down. Uh, the reason for that is, well, let's, I'll pause for a bit, write the answer, then we'll discuss it. Right, so I've said, as there is no external torque, so it's sort of like level two, but you've got to say torques, not forces, angular momentum is conserved. 
where it's in space, there's no external torques. Because the formula is for angular momentum, L equals the rotational inertia times the angular velocity, it's right here. We have, and same again, rotational inertia is proportional to the mass times the radius squared. Rotational inertia increases as the radius increased, thus the angular velocity must decrease. This will cause the time it takes to complete one rotation, oh I missed, to increase. Increase, I missed that, that's very messy of me. Um, thus increasing the period. So that explains why the rotation of the uh, period changes. Right, calculate the period of the rotation when the photovoltaic cells are fully extended. So we have it here again. The initial angular momentum is going to be equal to the final angular momentum. So we're going to try and find out what our angular velocity is and then from there work backwards to find the period because from our formula sheet we have angular velocity is equal to 2 pi f, um, and f is equal to 1 over t. So I'm going to put that 1 over t into here, equals 2 pi over period. And what I'm going to do is rearrange that to find the period. Um, again, that, oh, I'm going to put this i final, mega final. Um, rotational inertia, the initial rotational inertia, plus the, uh, times the initial angular velocity is equal to the final rotational inertia times the final angular velocity. Um, the initial, we'll write down what each ones are. The initial rotational inertia is over the page, 5.8 times 10 to the 4. Let's just write that now. 5.8 times 10 to the 4. The final inertia is 5.8 times 10 to the 4 plus, what's the new, it added 2.74 times 10 to the 3. 0.74 times 10 to the 3. Yep, and you can just add, these are sort of like, I don't know, conceptually you can sort of think of that, about them as masses, um, is in the fact that they sum um, commutatively, I think, commutatively is a word, you can just add them together. Um, and we've got that initial angular velocity is, it says up here, 0 0.45, 0 0.45, is it radian? Yeah, no other things, so radians per second. Being a bit lazy, that should really be mass kg meters squared. I'm not going to bother with the units down there. Um, and I'll find the final angular velocity, which will give me that number there, and then I'll rearrange that for t. So let's just rearrange this here. And I'll, I'll quickly rearrange this. T is equal to 2 pi over angular velocity, um, just so I can. Substitute and we'll find out what the angular freak uh, angular velocity is first the final angular velocity so that'll give me uh, I final if you subs put that into your calculator it should give you 0 0.42 radians per second minus one now I'm going to put that into up here so I'm going to go 2 pi divided by this number so the period is equal to 2 pi divided by 0.4297, and that's equal to, what is that equal to? 14.6 seconds. There we have it. Um, just checking, you have actually answered the question. 3SF as well, 